all right, the first thing is that uh, Ben's going to post some of my notes here. So let me read this first and respond. Uh, this is a principle that I hope we can all agree to. The only test we can use for salvation is our confession of faith and or our gospel message. In other words, uh, if I ask a person, you know, tell me what you believe, or I like phrasing it, are you certain you're going to go to heaven? And if so, why? Uh, or you can just ask a person, could you give me a gospel message? What would you say to someone who's lost and you want to share the gospel? Those are the only ways that I believe it's proper to, to uh, evaluate and then judge whether someone's saved. By, they're going to tell me what they believe. And we know what they need to believe is not that much, and it's very simple. So we, we, we must not judge other people's salvation by any other means other than this confession of faith or their gospel message. Uh, we, we must not use uh, question the depth of their faith, the quality of their faith, their special understanding of deep theology or other things. Um, we believe in the gospel of the cross plus nothing. Uh, and we must not allow people to add anything to it. And this is where I think that uh, I've seen things go wrong. And I want to confess to everybody that I'm responsible to a certain extent for the problems we've been facing when you witnessed this, uh, this schism in the church. Uh, what I'm, if I know, knew everything that I know right now about uh, the teaching of talk and doctrine, uh, I would have never agreed to uh, collaborate and work with them. Uh, because now I understand the, the seriousness of these differences. But the problem was that uh, I we didn't know about this initially, about three years ago. And then as we worked together for a year or two, uh, I recognized some differences that I thought were quite important. So I did what I'm asking everybody else to do, what the Bible tells us to do. You go directly to your brother. And I, I contacted Matthias, I can't tell you how many times. I'm, I'm not exaggerating, at least 15 or 20 conversations privately on the phone between the two of us where I say to him, I, I, I think you're going seriously wrong on this, and, and uh, I'm going to ask you to change your position or tone it down or, or, or don't at least don't declare it as an absolute, like you're decreeing this as a, as a doctrine. Uh, and so I, I dealt with him privately many, many times, trying to get him to uh, modify some of his positions. But even, I, I, even then, I did not understand, until he made his recent videos, I didn't understand how far he was taking this. But now that he's let it all out, I think now there's no restraint on him. Since he's not part of CES, there's nothing, to, no reason for him to not just say everything he actually believes. So some of the things I'm going to talk about today are things that we've we've realized and come to know since we broke up. And, and as I said, if I knew that in the beginning, I never would have put up with it. But let's go to the, let me see, the next point, Ben, is uh, I think I got a scripture that I want. Okay, this scripture here to me, when we did our Wednesday night study and we were in 2 Corinthians, when I got to this point, it's a very convicting scripture. I didn't apply it personally a couple of months ago. Uh, I didn't really, it didn't affect me the way it does right now. So I'll read it. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might bear with him. Ye might well bear with him. Well, in that KJV language, it's not as obvious uh, as when I read it in the Amplified. So I'm going to read that last part in the Amplified. It says, you tolerate all this beautifully, welcoming the deception. Well, I'm sorry, I have to admit that that's what's been happening. Uh, I personally, and I think we collectively, 
uh, we've we've heard people objecting us to these to it, and and we've uh, we've uh, ignored it, and we have bared with it. We we have uh, allowed certain false teachings to go continue, and I'm embarrassed and and uh, about it. But uh, that's my excuse. At least. We didn't know the whole truth of what uh, Matthias was teaching until it was gradually revealed. So I've got an excuse, but that was for the past. I don't have an excuse going forward because now uh, I'm perfectly aware of the seriousness of these problems. And, uh, and now if we continue to allow it, then this verse condemns me and any of us who are willing to allow it. So these are the problems as I see it in the teachings. And uh, as the front loading or back loading works for salvationist prohibited teachings at CES. If you look at our protocols, our rules for participating in the chat room, one of the rules is that uh, we didn't allow false teachers. And if false teachers, and this is a, taken right from our, um, our statement, um, on protocols, false teachers, those who challenge our core doctrines must be stopped immediately. They must be told that if they disagree with our core doctrines, then we can arrange a time and place to discuss it. This is not the time and place. If they persist, they must be removed. So this is our policy. And by the way, the, the, the policies that are established in that uh, protocol for the chat room, that was a result of several hours of group discussion with all the moderators uh, some of you here now, you participated in that, and we developed these protocols or rules for the chat room. And for the most part, we're doing a good job applying our, our uh, rules. But in this case, we don't allow false teachers to come into the church. And I mean, they're allowed to come in, and and uh, we want them to come in and listen and learn so they can be uh, learn the truth. But they're not allowed to come into the church and start teaching us that Jesus is not God. Faith alone, no, that's not true. You've got to have works. So we've agreed that we will not permit that in the church. But I think some of these teachings and talk and doctrine are violating that in this way. Uh, one, uh, I believe seeking or studying the Bible uh, as a prerequisite for salvation is, is a work system. And let's look at 2 Timothy 2.15. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, I don't know if it ever dawned on you before, but it's clear to me now that the subject of study is, is called a work here. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman. So this is telling us that when you study, it's working. But what I've seen is that we're told that you can't be saved unless you study the Bible exhaustively. So the telling people that uh, in order to get saved, you have to seek and study, and who knows how long you have to do it, and you have to labor in the scriptures in order to get saved. This is a front load of, of works, in my opinion. The second problem is faith, the teaching that faith is a gift or reward for your diligent seeking and studying. So the follow-up to that is that if you do seek and study the scriptures long enough, I mean, I heard Matthias recently say, you know, People say you can hear a five-minute gospel message and get saved, but that's not possible. You need the whole Bible, all 66 books. You've got to read it all, study it all, understand it all. That's necessary. You can't get saved without all that. So the result here is imposing a work system of study with the hope that God will somehow reward us for our work with the gift of some kind of supernatural faith, a saving faith that's special. Not like the normal faith that we've all just, you know, come to believe, but some kind of supernatural faith that is much deeper than your typical faith that, that we've all, I think, had. I don't, I haven't heard anybody here claim that they have some supernatural faith that's basically uh, different than other people's. That their faith is superficial, while our faith is supernatural and deep. Um, 
I also just recently saw Matthias actually say that salvation is not simple and easy. It is complex and difficult. I don't know about you, but I've been proclaiming salvation is simple and easy for 30 years now. I still believe it's simple and it's easy. The gospel is a simple message a person can learn in just a couple of minutes, and it's easy. All that's required is you believe it. So it, Matthias is saying, no, it's, it's complex. You've got to study the whole Bible and get the deep, deep understanding. That is Gnosticism, the belief that there's some deep, special knowledge that people need to get saved. That's the definition of Gnostic. Yeah. It's yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm sorry, I hit the button while my dog was barking. Oh, okay. All right. So the, the, there's this teaching that you cannot be saved by a five minute gospel message. You must study the whole Bible and wait for this special gift faith. Uh, another thing that's been a problem, and that's this the claim that if you call on the name of the Lord, you can't be saved. If you confess with your mouth, you can't be saved. If you say a sinner's prayer, you can't be saved. If you go forward and do an altar call, you're not saved. Well, uh, I, I, my position is that uh, if a person believes, they're saved. In spite, if, if, if someone told me that I called on the name of the Lord, and I confessed with my mouth, and I said a sinner's prayer, and I went forward at the altar call, they're guilty of all those things. But then they tell me, I, I'm going to go to heaven because Jesus is my Savior. He paid for all my sins. He promised me eternal life. It's settled. It's done. I couldn't care less about calling and praying and all that stuff. That does not nullify their confession of faith. And to say that they're not truly saved because they are guilty of any of these infractions is a false gospel. And 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 so you're not saved if you decide to believe the same thing applies if a person believes that they made a decision to believe i couldn't care less if they think they made they made the decision or god made it for them or god revealed it to them or what it doesn't matter all i care about is do you believe and saying that if someone made a decision that nullifies their salvation is a false gospel I don't care if they got there by making decisions or confessing or altar calls. All I care about is, will they confess this their faith to me right? And you now this last point, I think, is if someone is truly saved, it is impossible for them to struggle with doubts or fall into apostasy. Um, that is backloading um, works. Now, we have something in our statement of faith for the church. It says... Uh, no works are required to get saved. No works are required to keep our salvation. No works are required to prove our salvation. But this is uh, backloading works to uh, because it's the fifth point of Calvinism, perseverance of the saints. But if you haven't studied Calvinism deeply, you won't, most people don't realize their concept is you must persevere in the faith and in good works. There's two parts of the perseverance. So if a person doesn't do good works and they backslide into sin, they never were saved. If a person has a crisis of faith or loses their faith or their faith wanes, they're not saved. That is saying that uh, you have to persevere in the faith. And that's backloading it. Uh, the work of you must maintain your faith. It cannot ever fail. So these are the teachings that we've been listening to now for several years, and it's become inescapable to me that these are uh, false teachings that that creates a false gospel, and it's it's just intolerable for me any longer because if I personally allow that, then I am guilty, as it says in Second Corinthians, ye might bear well with him. I can no longer bear well with these teachings. Now, what I'd like everybody to do, I've said my piece.